Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be my review for The Batman with Robert Pattinson, which just came out. I just got home from the cinema. Overall, pretty good. First thing I noticed was with the house, I noticed it was a beautiful like gothic style for the house and I thought it was perfect for this Batman, this dark and broody Batman in like year two. We're going to get, get this out of the way first. The one scene that was just awful and it took me right out of the movie for a good few minutes was when Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman, she is talking about all these uh, elites to Batman on the roof. Now, what did she say? She said to Batman something like, we need to take care of these privileged white men. And I was like, oh, really? You had to say it like that. You had to say privileged white men. And it just took me out of it for a good few minutes. And I'm like, you couldn't just say like, privileged corrupt bastards or something. You couldn't frame it like that. You had to say privileged white men. And then she proceeds to make out with Robert Pattinson's Batman, like full on. Didn't you just say you didn't like privileged white men? Well, what's gonna happen when she finds out who's under the cow? And it's Bruce Wayne, a privileged white man. And getting into what happened in the movie, not too many spoilers, but just the way it was done, I thought it was really well done. I was in the movie, I was hooked. I was like, okay, cool. I'm watching everything that's happening. Here's how the story's going. It's really looking cool. And the way it was done too, he's actually like, the best detective of all of them. Like we see with the Riddler stuff, the cops, they start reading the riddles and he's like, D do you know what this means? And Batman's like, thinks for like two seconds. And he's like, yeah, solves the riddle, it's easy. Now people wanna say, oh, we don't need origin stories so we don't need to see Batman's beginning again. We've already seen it, Batman Begins. But this was closer to the year one Batman comic than Batman Begins. Like Batman Begins was really cool on its own thing, but it's just different. Like this one feels closer to year one for me then Batman Begins. Now, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was really, really great. I thought he was one of the best parts of it and his Penguin, man, I couldn't even tell it was Colin Farrell. Like I even heard it was Colin Farrell. And I'm like, really? It doesn't look anything like him. The only times where I could kind of tell it was Colin Farrell was when he was getting really heated and agitated and, and yelling. That's the only time I could really tell it was kind of him. But other than that, man, he did so well as uh, Penguin. And there was one little point in the movie. It's not really a spoiler. But there was one point where he was he was tied up. And so he had to waddle like a penguin to walk away. And that was just really funny to make him look like he's a penguin because he is the penguin. The Riddler, I was off about the Riddler's look from the beginning. I only watched the first couple of trailers and then I was out. I didn't want to see any more trailers because I wanted to see the movie. But the Riddler's look, I'm like, okay, that, that doesn't really make sense. If you think about Hush, what the look of Hush is, you're like, oh, that's, that's a lot closer to the look of Hush. And they even have the words Hush come up on the screen. So that was kind of a nod. Riddler was doing this kind of, he was like an underground online vigilante in his own right, trying to bring down the government or everyone who he thought was corrupt. They treated it kind of like what I thought was, you know, the lone gunman who you see sits at home and they post on social media that they're going to go out and shoot up a school or something. That's what it kind of felt like to me that they were making him out to be. And I was like, yeah, okay. But the riddles worked, but it was kind of off with what they were trying to make him out to be. But we'll see what they do going forward. Because at the end of the movie, now here's a spoiler if you don't want to hear it. At the end of the movie, they had him in Arkham with the Joker. Now that Joker, we saw him for a tiny bit. The Joker and what we saw looked more like a killing joke Joker than a Heath Ledger or a Joaquin Phoenix Joker that we've previously seen. Moving on, it was really well done what I thought was because people want to say we don't need the origins, like I said before. Now, it was explored differently. So they, they went through the backstory of uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne, not by showing the scene where they were killed, but by having different characters trying to play sides of Bruce Wayne, trying to tell him their perspective of the story or their the spin on the story the way they wanted him to know what happened. Specifically Falcone, he plays him to a T and then Bruce ends up going back to Alfred and his interactions with Alfred were few and far between. He was only in a couple of scenes really. Bruce then ends up learning the, uh, well, Alfred's side of the story of how he knew Thomas and what happened, all the backstory with the, everything that went on with the, the trust fund or the, the fund that they left off that they were going to be using to help fix Gotham that ended up going to criminals. Now, there was a power vacuum left at the end of the movie, which we've seen in like most Batman movies. Like you see one villain fall and then another villain rise, which is just same same thing we've seen before. What I heard was in a sequel, they might be doing Court of Owls. We'll see how that turns out. But what I'm more interested in is what we can set up from this movie because this movie is a whole universe in itself that Warner Brothers can... Um, leap off of 
depending on what we see with The Flash and who actually ends up in what universe after that movie. Because we will have um, Sasha Cow, Supergirl. We also got a new Superman coming. And we've also got Batgirl, Leslie Grace. Who knows Who knows what characters and who's going to be in what movies coming forward in the next few years. And the last thing I'll say with this, people are going to have an issue with um, Bruce and Batman in this. Because Bruce really wasn't in the movie. It was all Batman. Even when you saw Bruce, it was kind of Batman without the cow. I think it's because it's year two. He is still very overzealous and overcommits to things that happen in this movie. It's a, like situations. He goes way over the top and he gets himself in a bit of trouble for it as well. I think he hasn't been able to separate Bruce from Batman yet because you, you could pretty much see it. When you see him as Bruce, he's still very, keeps to himself, dark and broody. And it ends up, yeah, it, it's just Batman without the cow. But I think that's because he hasn't separated himself from Batman yet, as it is you too. But at the end, there's one line that he says, I think kind of uh, explains this. And it's when he says, I need to be more. So I think the way he's going about it, he understands that it isn't going to work going forward and he has to change. He has to be more than what he's being and what people expect. And maybe more in terms of how he carries himself and how he uses his personas to at his advantage. Like using Bruce more in a different way or using Batman uh, a bit less or having Batman uh, not rein it in, but just don't, don't be too overzealous and get yourself in trouble when you don't need to be. And then there was a couple of moments when one of the big fights i think he was responsible for a death but in the moment you can kind of be like well uh, that's uh, that's okay because it wasn't really him but he also injects himself with something and i'm like uh, okay and then he goes way over the top i'm like ah oh, that's interesting he was on the brink of death one second ago from getting a shotgun to the chest and then ne next minute he goes to save catwoman and he injects himself with something and then he's, he's like, OP. I'm like, okay. But that is uh, Batman. Overall, I liked it. There was that one thing that took me out of it. And I was like, ugh. Give it an eight, I reckon. For what the setup they did and the way they interacted with pretty much everyone. Except a couple of things here and there. So, for a couple of things here and there, I'll say eight out of ten. There you have it. That's my thoughts on the Batman. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video out there. And I'll see you in the next one.